Hi, I'm Sam Amolo. Here at my garage on Mount Chiha, we do things right. What I've got here is a 1970 Chevrolet C10, and this is a heavy duty half ton. It's got six lug wheels, it's got big old drum brakes all the way around. We're going to do a front disc brake conversion. I got a complete kit from Brothers Truck Parts, and it's the best kit I've ever used. It has everything. It's also a front end upgrade. Upper and lower ball joints, inner and outer tie rod ends and adjusting sleeves, and everything you need, the rotor, the brake caliper and pads, the wheel burns, the seals, right down to the dust cap, the Zerk fittings and the cotter pin. It's a wonderful kit. It goes on easy. I've already done the other side, so what I'm going to try to do, show you the right way to install all these things so you can go from this to what's on the other side without hurting yourself. All right. First thing you want to do is lay out your kit, make sure all the parts match the parts list. That's standard procedure. Here's our backing plate, the dust plate that goes behind the rotor, coated. Here's our spindle. By the way, I'm going with stock spindles. This is our new six lug, 12 inch ventilated rotor. It's a real heavy rotor. It's a hub rotor with the wheel burns and stuff in it. I'm going to put that aside. We're not ready for it yet. And you get all the components that you need. Like I said, complete set of Tie rod ends, inner and outer, nice adjusting sleeve. You get the caliper loaded with the pads, the sliding pins, everything you need. First thing, you want to be safe. Gloves, a pair of safety goggles, because there's a lot of junk on this old front end, and you're going to find that. I put a box on the ground. I'm going to take a chisel, scraper, wire brush, and knock all that heavy stuff off. That's where we get started. All right, I got everything cleaned up. You can see the upper ball joint. This is held on with four rivets to the control arm. I'm going to show you how to take those out. Now, right here on the spindle where the ball joint comes through, I pull the cotter pins out and I loosen these nuts up. I didn't take them off all the way. Don't do that. It's dangerous. You want to take the top one and the bottom one and just run them until they're flush with the end of the stud. They don't have about a quarter inch gap. Don't forget the spring is putting pressure on this lower control arm. If you take the nut off on the bottom particularly, or even the top, if the spring pushes it off, it can catch you. So I'm going to show you how to take that apart. But I've done that, loosened that up. I got the shock absorber off. I got the hydraulic brake line off where it went to the chassis. I took a couple bolts out of the front sway bar because when we get it down on the ground, we're going to support this with a jack and we're going to let it down. Now I'm taking the tie rod end off. You can use a pickle fork like this. You put it in the joint, hit it with a hammer, or you got one for your air hammer. And what that does, of course, that'll usually break the joint. Doesn't matter, we're going to throw these away because we've got brand new ones in the kit. But these little things here work good. This is a tie rod end puller. And I gave it a couple of shots with a hammer already. And, you know, there you go. See how nice and easy that popped that out? It's out, and we didn't damage anything. So if you want to use one of these joints over and you need to take it apart, this is what you need. <clears throat> okay, now we got our spindle ready to come off. And again, I just loosened these castellated nuts. I got a quarter inch gap because we still have the spring tension of the spring here. Now, these tapers will be stuck in the tapers of the steering knuckle of the spindle. You can see these castings right here. That's a great place to hit it. That's what it's made for. Get yourself a big hammer. It's going to take a few sharp wraps. The harder you hit it, the more chance you have it pulling apart. That's why you got goggles on. That one popped. You see that's tight? That's what you want. I'll do the same thing to the other one. Done. All right, now when I've got the truck down, I'm jacking it up. And when you see this move right here, like it just did, then we've taken the tension off it. And of course, we can take a wrench. These studs are really nasty from 46 or 47 years. Of being on here, I got the spring tension on the jack, so there's nothing to get hurt here. And what we'll do is we'll just pull these off. And of course, I got so much dirt and crud on the threads. My goggles back on here. Take this off. Now we're going to gently lower the lower control arm, and that'll release the tension on the spring, which is why I've got the shock disconnected. And I've got the sway bar disconnected. Go gently, easy. And there we go. That's all we need. And then we can lift the old spindle right off. 
Here's our lower ball joint. Here's our upper ball joint. The next step is we'll put the truck back up. We'll grind the rivets out, drive that out, bolt the new one in. Then we'll take our U-joint press and press out the bottom ball joint and install the new one. All right, now that all the rivets are ground off, I've got three of them punched out. I'm using an impact hammer with a, a drift on. Keep your face on, you do your goggles to protect your face. Find, try to find the center of the rivet, it's a little hard to do sometimes. And then you can drive it out. Okay, now this is the new upper ball joint that comes in the kit from Brothers Truck Parts. A nice joint, it's complete with the grease fitting, got a new castellated nut, even the cotter pin, and the boots already installed from the factory, nice and tight with the clamp. I cleaned up the area here, all good, the wire brush, tuck this through, work your boot down, it fits in there. You also get the hardware, you get hardened bolts with nuts and lock washers, we put our four bolts in, Line them up with the holes. There we go. Put the nuts on and we'll tighten it evenly all around. And our upper ball joint is installed. Super easy. All right, now we're getting ready to take out our lower ball joint. This is a ball joint press. Now, it's not a real expensive one. You can get a whole kit. I bought this online. It's made offshore, but it's a decent kit. Here's the secret. The threads for the big drive screw Lubricate those good with a good extreme pressure lube so they won't gall. This fits on top of here. You get different adapters. You got to have a receiver for the joint to go into. And then, of course, I got it tightened up. Now, put your goggles on. I'll wear these the whole time I'm taking this apart. The whole truck apart. Okay. So you crank on it. I let the frame stay up against the control arm. And now, when you get it really tight under tension like that, then you can take your hammer, pop the bar. See that loosen that up? That means you move the joint a little bit. Do that a couple times and this joint will press right out. Break down, put some more pressure on it. Since you're not going to use this ball joint again, you don't care about hitting it. It's ready to come out. all there is to it. Now loosen this up. And there's our bottom ball joint. We'll clean this up really good. We'll take the new one, lubricate it. The secret to putting the new one in with the press is put it in square. Okay, now we're getting ready to put our new ball joint in. You can see this lower ball joint, much larger than the upper ball joint. And this comes in the brother's kit. There's a boot on it. Took the boot off. I got this hole all cleaned up. Got some lube on here. I'm gonna put this through. Now here's the critical thing about pushing in a press in ball joint so you don't stretch the arm or ruin the arm or jam the whole thing up. It's gotta go in square to the arm. So what I like to do is I get it in there, hold it like that, I take a soft hammer, not a ball peen, and I just give it a few taps, get it started. I'll feel around here. You can feel the lip and you get it started nice and square. If you do that, you're gonna be in great shape. The next step is set up our adapters and our press and we'll push this right in. All right, now, I've got our press set up. It's got a big adapter here. They have these little drivers that the adapter fits into the grooves. I got, I'm not pressing directly on the ball joint. There's another adapter here. Frames up against the control arm. It's got it started square. And all you have to do is start turning on it and press it in. Now, it'll get tight, you gotta work at it, but if it starts to get too tight, give it a little pop with a hammer. If that doesn't free it up, stop, because if you start going in crooked, you'll jam it, you'll stretch the arm, then you gotta buy another control arm. You can get those from brothers, but why, not, why spend the money and why tie up the job? So here we go, we'll start to crank this thing up, and you can kind of feel it going. Yeah, see this is not taking a lot to put in, going in pretty good.
All right, our disc brake conversion is all done. The last thing I'm doing is taking some good brake clean, cleaning everything off. I installed the hub rotor, packed the wheel bearings with good grease. Use a seal driver to put your seal in. Don't hit it with a hammer. And the same thing with your dust cap. Don't beat it all up. If you don't know how to do that, we've got another video coming on how to properly pack and torque the wheel bearings. Now, these are Timken tapered bearings, and of course, they've got to be preloaded. I got everything together, our calipers on. The only modification I made to this kit was on the hydraulic brake line right here. It seems to be real close to the caliper, so I put a piece of fuel line tubing over it, a couple of tie wraps. That way it won't chafe. I got our new inner and outer tie rod ends on. Has a nice adjusting sleeve and of course has the jam nuts. And this has got a left hand thread and a right hand thread, so your front end guy just pops those loose, turns that and it can tow it in or out, whatever it needs to do. This is going to the alignment shop. Just to get there, what I do is I took the old tie rod assembly off, made the new one the same length. That's close enough to drive there. <clears throat> I also, as a last step, checked all my carter pins. They're all bent. Everything's tight. I greased all the fittings. Now, this truck has grease fittings, upper and lower control arms on the inside of the cross shaft. There's eight fittings per side. I greased it with a nice, waterproof grease. <clears throat> I'd be all set to hook up my brake lines and bleed it, but I'm going to replace the steel lines. I'm waiting for those to come, and I'm getting those from Brothers Truck Parts. When you do a disc and drum combination, you need a combination valve. It's a proportioning valve and a metering valve to meter the front brakes and meter the rear brakes. You need one of these. You have to change it. This truck didn't have it when it came from the factory. So make sure you do that. Hope you enjoyed learning exactly how to do a disc brake conversion. We'll see you next time.